remedy. The flower's tormental, yeah. it's little yellow or, or mountain buttercups is what their other sort of common name is. But it was used to treat gout uh, and stomach aches and things of that nature as okay. a sort of medicinal remedy. So what would that be? Would that be like an anti-inflammatory sort of thing? Ah, oh, the nurse would know, of course. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But that's, that's its sort of bit of history. Or part of its history. Common heather or ling heather. What about? Do um, we use quite a lot of different things. Is that sphagnant moss? That is sphagnum. I think yes that is. Sphagnant? Yeah. Right. Sphagnum. This stuff can be brewed into beers. Right. There's three common types of heather, or the three main types of heather. Ling, which is common heather. Um, cross leaf heath and bell. Cross leaf heath and bell heather are fairly similar looking. Normal spots them are uh, differences. Uh, and then ling is recognisable because it's the smallest flower. They've got this slightly like darker colour to them. And if you look at the leaves, they're very, very tight packed each of the leaves. They almost look like stems rather than little leaves. Whereas the the other types, the bell, that one's a bit up there, much broader leaf. It's great for having a wild poo and wiping your bumpsy with it. It's um, anti antibacterial. Yeah, it's got a very small, um, quite useful iodine property to it. Oh, so you could purify water with it? Yeah. You can drink it straight from it. It just takes a bit of iodine in. So you, like, honestly, you can pick up a chunk of it and just squeeze it down. Bear grill style totally fine to drink it's just got a bit of an iodine flavor well doesn't the peat that we're studying at the moment do that a bit of purification anyway yeah, yeah definitely so this i think is bell pretty sure it's bell gets its name from the leaves look like little liberty bells yeah i'd say that i don't these are the flowers um one way to tell between bell and cross leaf heath is bell um is that bell heathers the flowers grow just towards the top of the the stem okay and cross leaf heath they kind of grow a lot further down uh, and, it, and the leaves themselves the cross leaf heath are way more right crossed, hence the name <laughs> That's the leaves you're looking for. Okay. Quite often looks, and you'll just see the stem of it like that, because it's a favourite of sheep and right. goats in the area. They will pick it clean for these because they're full of sugar and dead tasty. Eat it, honestly. It's just a blueberry. Yeah, that's edible. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Yeah. Put on your cereal, tasty. So yeah, good evidence of map lichen or geographicus. Um, Obviously, gets its name it's on boulders, and then it then starts to die off, doesn't it? Yeah. And then that's where mosses, mosses can start to grow from there. It's something for the some sort of no, uh, a key, nutrition. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nutrition for them to get that ball rolling. And then when this moss starts to die off, it allows things like mm. grasses and bracken and a lot of uh, a lot of coal. Being of like coal seams, whenever we use, uh, you have just for burning. That started its life as moss. Um, 90%, maybe not 70% of it was all mosses and lichens that are then rotted, obviously gone through a huge amount of uh, heat and cooling and pressure within the earth and eventually become coal. But that's how they started their life cycle. Well, this is, this is why like, the mountain is slowly being dissolved yeah. by the greenery. And it's because it starts off with the lichen, the lichen dies, the mosses grow, mosses die grass takes over and that's how it all starts isn't yeah. it it's a it's a big cycle isn't it really
Right. Nice That's one. Star moss. Oh. Uh, you can see, look at it. Looks like a yeah. star, doesn't it? But um, it's in the same family as some club moss as club moss as well. It's quite a simple celled, uh, again a simple celled sort of, of moss. Um, and back during sort of Jurassic Cretaceous period, these things similarly would grow to really massive, really, like, massive heights, like twenty foot, say. Um, but it's actually. So why are they so small now? So the biology of it hasn't changed that much, okay. um, but it's. Obviously, for it to grow to huge heights, it needs, huge, it needs that much more food source. Right. For it to grow to yeah. this sort of height, yeah. it's obviously using a respective small amount of uh, whatever it is, nutrition from the soil. Right, so um, whatever it it was feeding on to make it massive, it's obviously yeah. in a much smaller... It's, yeah, there have been mythological changes within sort of whatever's in the soil, whatever's in a, around us as well, because yeah. Obviously, we're in a probably a slightly different climate to yeah. what was back wow. then, um, and potentially as well that its natural predators, natural hazards, sort of, but from an evolutionary point of view, animals tend to be smaller. Yeah. So, it can be, so it doesn't so, need to grow. It doesn't need to grow so big to protect itself. So it's just changed over time. Yeah. To adapt. Um, but sort of from a biological point of view, it's still a very similar makeup. that rowan tree you can see it's got its red berries down there yeah if it can if it holds its red berries sort of late through the summer as old wives tales go they say that that means it's a sign of a, it's going to be a big winter it's going to be quite a harsh winter um, but quite a cool fact about it is this is what back sort of 500 years after christ when druids were what our country was it's very pagan um this is what they would whittle wands out of um, Rowan, it was very, it was always like their holy tree, and Anglesey was like Anglesey Island was the stronghold of the Druids, and it was only when the Romans invaded and uh, sort of took their forces to Anglesey and totally wiped out the Druids, sort of 550 years after Christ, um, that was kind of the end of or the beginning of the end for England's sort of traditional religion. That was the end of sort of paganism in our country. But yeah, rowan trees is what they were, they would whittle their wands out of. No wonder they got repeated. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of Romans run at you with swords and you're like, have yeah. some of that, son. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to wonder them? We did. I can't, can't remember exactly, but I think we did. Hey. That was graceful. This just here, that has little touch. just there, see it's got a small little cup in the top of it. Oh, okay. A little hollow. It's called a pixie cup. And sort of Welsh folk folklore goes, that's the cup the pixies drank from. Oh. A teeny tiny cup that grows. It's like a pixie cup. And uh, it's quite often found next to this stuff here. Uh, which I, I, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie, I can't quite remember its name. It's either like um, Devil's Stick or Devil's Wand or something like that. But I know pixie cups, 
these little dudes and these little dudes grow in very very similar climates so you often see them next to each other uh, that's the one that I have to, I'll have to go home and double check <laughs> I'll always whip out on a especially a day when we're just going around for a donder so this stuff here is something called wood sorrel um, it's a sign that the, the ground's actually quite fertile I think it tends to grow in relatively fertile, relatively damp places. But eat that and tell me what you th think it tastes I like. You could eat some yeah, so it's recognisable through those three heart shaped leaves. Eat it and think of apple skin. Yes, definitely. Sour apple? It is, yeah. Mm. That's quite tasty, isn't it? Mm. It's like a, stem and all, just love them in. Like a sour sweet. Mm. Mm. Sorrel. Wood sorrel. Wood sorrel. It's bloody lovely, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But yeah. That's, um, what what with, with foraging becoming quite like a, a cool thing and people getting quite on board with that, a lot of chefs are using a wood, wood sorrel with salads cooking, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's becoming more and more common um, as an entry for salads. Hello.